Hey guys, and welcome back to Super Hostile Online. Last time we uh, took care of the Yellow Wool dungeon, and uh, well, as of right now, there are no other dungeons to explore, not any major ones at least, so I figured I'd do something that I my, maybe I should have done this sooner, but we're actually going to take a look around everything else that Super Hostile Online has to offer, starting with uh, Valgard City. Um, I kind of just rushed out of the city in the first episode because I mainly wanted to focus on dungeons, but I kind of enjoyed doing it a lot, so we're going to do some other stuff as well. So uh, we're going to start off over, uh, I guess, on the east side, um, or maybe we, we should start checking out this square. So this square is where you spawn in after you do the starting area. It has uh, some stuff. This these chests over here are for people that uh, that are new to the server. It has some basic stuff like some some letters you can make armor, uh, some basic armor, uh, some guidebooks apparently. Um, yeah, some other good stuff. I occasionally uh, put stuff in here that I uh, have left over so uh, new people can grab it. Um. That's pretty much it for the main square. There's a message board here at least, uh, or I guess with the rules if you uh, wanted to check those out. Um, the city thankfully has these nice signs that tell you what, what is where. Which if you're new to the server really helps a lot. Falgard City is kind of easy to get lost in. Not as much as it used to be, but yeah, it's, it's a pretty big city. So uh, Over here we have some cake that respawns every day. And I didn't mean to shoot an arrow at it, but you can eat the cake. Um, over here we have the uh, the blacksmith. Uh, Valgar City has a lot of different shops you can check out. This one mainly sells uh, weapons. Uh, the wooden the wooden weapons aren't worth your money. Um, the money, by the way, the the lowercase g here means gold nuggets. There's also the uppercase g, which means gold ingots. And then the double uppercase G, which means gold blocks. Uh, these are really cheap, but you shouldn't buy them anyway because you you get better better weapons just by fighting regular enemies. You you shouldn't buy these. <laughs> Same goes with for the stone sword, actually. Even though it's better than the wooden one, it's not really worth it still. It might be early on, but there are better ways to get early weapons than that. The shields are nice, though. If you want a good, uh, especially early game, I recommend buying these. Because shields when you're dealing with projectiles are incredibly nice and also against creepers. Creepers do a lot of damage since the server the server is on hard mode so <laughs> everything does a lot of damage if you're not careful. So I guess that does it for the blacksmith. We have a food shop over here which is sell some basic stuff. Cookies are terrible which is why they're the cheapest here. They, they're they not good food. Um, you might even be better off just eating rotten flesh. <laughs> Bread is pretty good, as are carrots. They're pretty good early early game food. Although they do drop from um, they do drop from regular enemies. There's apples too, which you could buy. I don't remember off hand, off the top of my head what the uh, the actual like food and saturation values are, but apples are pretty all right. So I guess we could uh, let's see what else we've got here. So if we keep going here. We have the uh, the Felgard Inn and the storage lockers. I guess I could... Yeah, we'll go there. Um, we won't check out the storage locker. Well, maybe we will check... Nah. We'll check out the storage lockers in a different video. I will i can't make up my mind. <laughs> I'll do those when we check out the, the housing districts. I won't be doing that in this video either. The city also has these uh, these little cake, cake benches. Uh, where you just you press the button and it places a cake from your inventory if you have one. Um, so this is the inn and you will be coming here a lot probably because every time you have fatigue from doing a dojo I don't have fatigue right now, but if you do You can actually rest up here in the inn. You can go upstairs and you can hit one of these buttons and uh, It also it also gives you saturation and a little bit of blindness and slowness, which is kind of trivial it also gives you uh, saturation, so if you're a really high level class, like say you're a, a rank 8 defender, you'd have something like 50 hearts. Now recovering that with food takes a lot of time and a lot of food, so you come here, 
you press the button and you just heal up to full because every time you log onto the server your max health uh, or at least your if you had a uh, over 10 hearts it actually resets you back to 10 hearts for some reason I'm not sure why it does that but that's a really nice way to uh, to deal with that over here we have the decor shop um, I don't know if I have any on me right now I don't um, uh, stuff will drop decor credits which are like enchanted pieces of paper and you can turn those in here uh, it's one all they don't have prices on them because all of them are one uh, it's, it's one for eight with these I believe for the building blocks um, I, I'm not sure I'm not sure how much the vines are but I think all of this is eight don't quote me on that I could be wrong uh, there's the flowers which up here which are also eight you can turn them into dyes if you want or just plant them as flowers the cactus are one to one though I think the the all the big flowers may be one to one or one to four why am I even telling you this if I don't actually know I'm not even sure I don't happen to have any in my inner chest I don't think nah it's just backup gear alright so that's the decor shop it has a lot of nice uh, pretty blocks uh, these actually all used to drop like randomly from enemies and they were it was kind of annoying because you wanted them because they were rare but at the same time they were filling up your inventory and were just carrying like one block back so effects replace them with the decor credits which are much nicer so you have like one uh, second currency uh, just for decor items which is nice over here is the uh, are the housing instances we'll check those out in a later video um, we can check out the bank here uh, here's another entrance to the inn and over here we have the uh, the bank the city has these ATMs all over you can quick withdraw uh, quick deposit uh, 10 10 ingots and over here you can do like uh, one you can do 10 and you can do an entire stack and there's uh, we can check my balance I have 1600 right now I have a lot of gold but having a lot of gold is nice because uh, well you can use your gold if you die we'll, we'll see that in a bit I'm not gonna die but I'm gonna show you how that all works there's also a market report here uh, looks like there hasn't been many uh, there haven't been many trade back runs today we could go further here and these are just uh, like little decorative builds which is really nice in 2.0 the city used to be kind of empty uh, other than like the shops and like the the places you act that actually like uh, serve a, a functional purpose there wasn't really much to see but now these uh, little areas are here that are just really cool to look at and I like it it makes the city feel way more alive than it used to be although the city still has like these these uh, these alleyways which are a little bit plain but uh, now we're on, the, on a, in a different part of the city I guess we could check we could check out this part now so you could go you could keep going over there and it'll eventually lead you to the gate out of the East Commons we've we've seen that a few times already so um, so back over here in the South District where we just were uh, you have the general store over here which sells some basic stuff XP bottles not sure why you would buy these it's probably better to just spend your gold on uh, XP directly rather than buying bottles uh, you can buy signs or chests if you don't want to use your wood or if you don't have any wood. You can buy furnaces here, which I think these... I There might be cobblestone so you can craft furnaces yourself, but it's limited. So this is a pretty good deal. You can buy crafting tables and fuel. Fuel is... Uh, I think they're just the regular... Are these still fuel wafers? I have two gold. I can, I can buy these. Uh, they're just wooden pressure plates they used to be called fuel wafers or maybe these are the fuel wafers but they're just not named some of them were named and some weren't which I always thought was really weird now they're completely removed as drops so I think this is like the only way you could still like get well not really they're just regular wooden pressure plates I don't know if there's still any way to get the ones that have the lore on it but um, yeah you could buy these but it's better to just use coal and Coal drops pretty regularly, so you can buy a book and quill if you want to write stuff, send people mail. 
but I think that's it for the general store. Um, over here is another ATM. We have the Golden Grub over here where you can buy some uh, some special meals. Uh, I've, I actually have all of these, to, uh, just have them as collectibles. I like collecting lore items for some reason. They're just, uh, they just give you like a few food items and it's it's kind of nice. I like this place mostly for the aesthetics. I think it's a really cool building with the, uh, the golden silver fish on top. Uh, I don't think this works for me anymore. Now this is actually an exploration point. Um, basically throughout the world there are uh, like, sep like certain hidden buttons you can press. They give you a bunch of experience and sometimes some items. I only have four of them. I've heard there's ten of them but I've never... I don't know where the other ones are. I'll show you a few uh, if, if, we, if we find the locations but... So that, that, that's it for the, the Golden Grub. You can get a nice look over here. The bank also looks really cool. I really like how the bank looks. Overall, it's a very pretty looking city. So over here is the Death Arena where you will die if you go in here. I think it's like a... Uh, you're basically running from uh, exploding creepers that fall on your head. Or is it TNT here? I think it might be TNT actually. And apparently there have been... Uh, 184 deaths in here. I'm not sure why you would do this, but I guess if you if you were dying anyway, you might was you might as well. <laughs> uh, over here is a building that doesn't really serve any any purpose anymore, other than like selling stuff. You still have rare treasures. I'm not sure if those are still in the game. Dungeon coins definitely aren't. Uh, you can't buy dungeon coins anymore either. Dungeon coins are a, a relic from. The uh, the 2.0 days where, and 1.0 actually, where uh, doing dungeons would give you tokens and you could turn the token in for loot. Uh, this is actually, this you can still like see the outline on the floor. Those are actually the buildings where you would go to turn in your tokens and get your loot. But they've now been turned into the death arena because instead of, uh, the, uh, instead of numbered floors... Uh, of a dungeon like we used to have, we now have the wool dungeons. So, uh, if we check out the north side of the city here, uh, we've got the uh, the moderator uh, mailbox. If you want to send the moderator's mail about uh, something like buying a house, maybe. Although that's usually done on Discord. What am I saying? Um, I've never actually used it before, so. Uh, there is a thing over here, a cactus that we will check out. Uh, well, you can go here to, to break your armor, basically. There's a certain armor set that um, that is magenta color that you can break here, that we'll see in a bit. There's also the black market here. Sadly, this is actually a re-recording. This I actually found this on the original recording of this. I had never actually been here before, and for some reason the button here is missing. Not sure what's up with that. You can turn in boats, uh, beds for a lot of experience. These are all items that you're not supposed to have. Uh, basically, they uh, boats and beds both allow you to get to places you're not supposed to be. I, I, I know at least beds mess with barrier blocks. Uh, so you can sell them here before the server removes them, I guess. I, I think there's something like running that removes boats from people's inventory or something like that. Or so I've heard. Uh, over here we have the uh, the special command plaza where you can do stuff like leave your guild. Uh, you can also look at the market report again. You can return to the welcome area if you missed your welcome, but I have not, so I'm not gonna do that. You can reset your wool progress here. That's what I did for the uh, these last few videos that we've done. Um. I basically reset my wool progress so I could get all of the wools again uh, in the video. And then back over... I guess this is all still the north side. There's more to the north side. Over there is the west side if you go further back that way. There's a leather shop over here. You can buy leather if you want. If you, uh, if you want to have some armor to start out with. If we go even further over here, this is a cut above. Also a nice looking building. It's a shop that sells all kinds of different stuff. 
like ender chests. I, I have an ender chest in my house. You can buy them here. It's nice for uh, carrying items over. Um, you can get the uh, the jukebox if you get some records from uh, skeletons shooting at creepers. You can buy trap chests if you want. Um, if you want to place two types of chests right next to each other. Because normally you can't do that without creating a double chest. And you can't put two double chests right next to each other. So you can buy common and uncommon gear here. Uh, the common leather armor is pretty good. The uncommon stuff is also... Um, the uncommon stuff is really nice. And I think it's like for the harder dungeons. If you're unfamiliar with them. The, the uncommon set is really nice. I'm actually wearing a pair of uncommon pants. I didn't buy that here. I actually got that as a drop. But I did. I do occasionally buy stuff here. This uncommon iron sword I bought here because for some reason I'm really unlucky with sword drops. So they're pretty pricey, but they're also really good. So we can go further up, and over here we have the more expensive stuff. Uh, like over here in the back, you can uh, you can form a guild. You can uh, get a uh, you can abandon your house, which is pretty expensive. Uh, because it, it's it's all a manual process like it has to be cleaned up and stuff so someone else can buy it so you're discouraged from doing it by uh, uh, and for that there's a really high fee on it so uh, you can order a custom guild tag if you're if you're running a guild um, that that's the uh, the little the little purple tag in front of my name uh, if you were ever curious about that that is my uh, the the tag that that the guild that I'm a member of uses bolt surge uh, down here, I believe in the 1.0 days of Super Hostile Online, this used to be where uh, an alchemy place was. However, alchemy is not in this current iteration of SHO, so... It's still, it's still cool to look at. I think it actually still looks like uh, the way it did back, back in the day, so that's kind of nice. Uh, I think we can actually go further up. I neglected to do that. There's no, there's no more sh shops up here, but it looks pretty nice. It's a pretty nice view. There's the trees up here. I really like it. I don't think there's any secrets over here, but you still get a nice view of the city. Although we will get a nicer view of the city in a little bit. So I think that does it for Cut Above. And I believe we've also seen the entirety of the north side of the city here now. Well, there's still some more stuff. We've got the Trade Pack Workshop. We've looked at that in the previous video. Uh, and another Market Report. And some decorative buildings here again. It all looks really, really neat. So I think from here we can go over to the west side of the city. We'll just go back to the center, the center plaza. Or we could do it this way. So on the west side of the city you've got... Um, mostly on the, the west side of the city is for... Uh, for um, your class hat. Um, so over here is where you turn gold into experience. It just gives it to you without like having to deal with throwing experience bottles. And even if you have experience bottles, there's this thing which basically gives you the average of what 64 bottles would give you without needing to break the bottles. Because that's just really annoying and slow. So if you die, you go over here, you spend a lot of your gold and you get your levels back. Which is really nice. Um, because in the past it was really, really hard in 2.0 to get your levels back and to get back to like a class hat. Which made dying like really, really punishing. I mean, dying is still pretty punishing because there are some items that are lost when you die, like these the the different charms that tweak your stats. These have curse of vanishing on them, which means they still disappear when you when you die. So, um, but yeah, you can do that, and you can get a a better class. Uh, which we'll check out the class garden next. I'm not sure if I was here in a previous video if I explained it. I know I've sh I did show off both Scout and Defender. Um, but basically the way the class garden works is... Or the Garden of the Three Paths as it's technically called. Every 10 levels will give you a different helmet. Right now we are a rank 8 Scout. Uh, this is the uh, the first one you get. And let me actually just remove my armor because that's that gives me extra health. 
uh, or at least at least uh, only the, the the merchant's tunic does. But you get the you get the point. Every one of these novice ranks gives you uh, two extra hearts. So the max rank of novice gives you a full row. And these are really good to get early on, like before, like you grind outside the city for a little bit, and then you come over here, you get your first novice hat. And actually, without um, without getting any of the wools, you can get all the way up to tier three of any class. So after the fifth novice hat at level uh, at level sixty, you actually get uh, the first rank of a class. So there's three different uh, classes. There's actually a fourth one that is uh, a little bit secret. Um, might or might not check that out at some point. But at level 60 you can get three different classes. There's the fighter which uh, specializes in uh, attack damage and knockback resistance. That are Those are the main the main perks you get. Every rank also gives you an extra heart. Um, so you'll still be gaining more and more um, health as you go. So we can get all the way up to rank 8 here. Uh, which would give us uh, plus 80% attack damage and plus uh, 0.85% uh, knockback resistance. Which is basically knockback resistance in case you're not aware is a number between 0 and 1. Where 1 is full knockback resistance and... 0.85 basically means you have an 85% chance of resisting knockback. And if you were to combine that with something like the shield, which gives 0.5, you would have full knockback resistance. It's just pretty nice. And then we've got over here, the, uh, the down the middle lane here, we've got the defender. Uh, which every rank of defender uh, give you, gives you three hearts. And uh, you also get uh, you'll get varying levels of protection and thorns, so you'll take less damage. You'll um, you will damage enemies that hit you, which is really nice. Usually, thorns is pretty bad because it makes your equipment uh, break faster, but these don't break, so you don't have to worry about that. Uh, every defender hat also gives you full knockback resist, as you can see, has plus one on it. So. That's that's really the main reason why I switch to defender sometimes because the full knockback resist is really really nice. All, I mean, I guess I could also do the uh, the fighter with the um, with the shield, but I really like tanking damage sometimes. Tanking damage is really fun. Just having a lot of health and just being able to just stand there and have enemies uh, take damage from touching you. So we can get all the way up to the max rank here. Or at least the max rank that's possible right now. The max rank for any class right now that we can achieve is 8. Because uh, that is the max we can get with the number of wolves we have. We've got 5 wolves, so level 130 is the highest we can get. And if we combine this with the shield, which gives you uh, plus 25%, we actually have like 55 hearts, which is insane. It's over 100 health. <laughs> So yeah, Defender is really fun to me. Defender used to be like the worst of the classes uh, before it got the buff where uh, higher levels of Defender would give you a higher protection enchant. I believe it was protection 1 for all of them before and you didn't have the full knockback resist either. Uh, you had less health. It was not really like a good class. It was more of a safe option if you were worried about dying. Now it's actually a viable class which is really really nice. And then over here, you've got the uh, we've you've got the scout, which is my main class. I love being a scout. Love going fast. Uh, every rank of scout, uh, as you can see, scout does not actually give you any any health. Your max health as a scout is uh, two rows of hearts, as it is for the novice five hat. Uh, scouts instead do give uh, movement speed and attack speed. These actually, some people say that Scout got nerfed. Some say Scout got buffed. Um, it's kind of how you how you look at it. Uh, basically, the attack speed and movement speed were actually uh, were actually swapped from how they were before. So before it was like ten percent movement speed and five percent attack speed, and that's what you get as a Scout. Every rank makes you move faster, and you also 
uh, get more. Um, you also get more uh, attack speed. So my movement speed is plus forty percent now. And my attack speed is plus eighty. And especially the attack speed uh, is why I consider uh, the change in with scouts to be a buff. Uh, you don't move as fast anymore, but you swing weapons really fast. Scouts weren't really that great in combat because you were so frail and you could run past everything. I mean, that's a thing you can do as a scout, but now scouts can actually fight because of the uh, the higher uh, attack attack speed. So over here, I've got a, uh, a battle axe, which usually is a really, really slow weapon to swing. It does a lot of damage, but it's really, really slow. So uh, I'm actually going to show you a comparison just to show you how much of a difference it actually makes. So... Uh, if we get rid of our movement speed, and I'll actually take off my speed charm too, uh, you'll see how. Uh, look at the uh, the little thing below my um, below my crosshair there. That's how slow the uh, the battle axe charges up. You swing once, and you have to wait for it. Uh, you have to wait to swing again. But now, if we actually go with a max rank scout or a rank eight scout, whatever you like to call max rank. Uh, I'll, I'll put this stuff back on since it doesn't really matter anymore. I've, I'm done explaining the health thing. And this just gives movement speed so it doesn't really do anything with uh, with a, with swing speed. So if we look at the battle axe now, like you'll see it's, it's a lot faster than it was before. Regular axes are pretty much as fast as a normal class can swing or any other class can swing a sword. You could basically like jump and... and um, uh, you can like stun lock an enemy almost. It's it's really nice how how much damage you can deal out really quickly. If we combine this with the speed charm, I guess even more insane because this also gives fifteen percent attack speed. So see, this basically allows you to just spam axes, and with the with the battle axe, like that is really really fast. You can swing battle axes so so fast. And that's why I love scout. Battle axes are pretty much my favorite kind of weapon. I love using axes. So, uh, I think there's only one more thing left to explain here. We've, almost, we've been going for almost half an hour, which is kind of crazy. Over here we have the Square One Training Dojo. Uh, this place is where you go when you die. You want to go back to Square One. It takes all your levels, all of your items in your inventory. So if you do it, you probably want to stuff... You probably want to put stuff away before you do this. Uh, you get uh, you get leather armor, you get saturation, and you get strength. So you can basically get your stuff back really easily. Or if you really start out, want to start over from nothing, you can get your stuff back. It's a nice way to grind up uh, some stuff to get back to the early class hats. So I'm not going to press that button. <laughs> It, is, it gives you just like a, a magenta set of armor, which is what the um, the button on the cactus was talking about. You get magenta colored armor, uh, the noob suit as it's as it is known as, um, which you can't actually remove. That's why the cactus is there, but it gives you some basic protection so you can get your stuff back or you can get stuff you can get geared up again. It's a really nice addition. This building used to be the uh, the place where the journals used to be. Um, they were like little lore books that Vex added. But I think in all of SHO 2.0, only one book was ever written all the way at the start. I actually have it, and I guess we'll take a look at it at some other point. It's in my locker. But yeah, I think that does it for uh, Valgard City for now. Um, one more thing that I would like to do... Uh, before we end off here is I'd like to end this episode off in a nice place and I am hungry and against my own better judgment I'm gonna eat inside the city even though you really should be using the inn when you're hungry in the city but we can use these doors at the at the gates and you can actually well if you can run through the doors that's kind of an issue as a scout sometimes you get stuck on doors so actually we are inside of the um, inside of the the shield right now that's over the uh, over the gate so that's really neat you can look outside and see the bridge out to East Commons and if we come over here we can get on top of the city wall and you can get this really cool view of the city and I think this is where I'm gonna 
and off here I guess next time we will look at the uh, different housing areas we'll look at the lockers um, and in the episode after that we might check out all, everything else that Eastern Commons has to offer that we haven't seen yet so we're gonna be seeing uh, some more of the uh, the world of SHO so thanks for watching and I'll see you next time